Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video, we're going to go through an impulse invariance question. Now in the previous video, we explained what the impulse invariance method was and how to apply it and why we do. And in today's video, we'll just be going through an example. So if you're unfamiliar with the impulse invariance, I suggest that you go back and watch that video prior to starting this one. So before we get started, there's a few things I'd like to point out. Firstly, we're given a Z transform in the top right hand corner here. Now this is often the case for an impulse invariance question and the first step prior to implementing the impulse invariance itself is to get the analog filter into a form where you can take the inverse Z transform. Secondly, let's quickly note that the impulse invariance method is essentially making the substitution NT where T is our sampling period for our continuous time T in our analog filter and N is simply our iterator for which sample we're currently looking at. So let's make the substitution n of t in for our continuous time t in our analog filter here and then we'll take the z transform secondly note that this is just a minor variation of the z transform in the top right hand corner here i've just divided top and bottom by z to be able to get this z to a negative power now if you're unfamiliar why we want our z terms to have a negative power it actually just indicates a delay in the digital filter uh, but we'll go into that in much more depth in future videos. Okay, so we make the substitution giving us h of, and then instead of nt in our function here, we simply have n. As t is constant, that's our sampling period, so that's going to be unchanged. And n is the only variable in our function. And that's equal to the one half stays out the front and it's unchanged, and then inside the brackets, we have e to the negative, and let's put all of this in brackets, alpha plus j beta, and then that t is replaced with our nt. So let's put our t inside the brackets, our sampling period t, and let's multiply all of that by n. Now, we've written it like this just to show what our alpha term is in our equation. And then we add e to the negative again, alpha minus j beta this time and then that's multiplied by our sampling period t and then that's all multiplied by our n our iterator and then remember this is all multiplied by u of and this is no longer t this becomes n okay so now we've got our equation in terms where we can take the z transform so taking the z transform will give us h of z and then that's equal to the half stays out the front and then inside we can say that the k term here is a value of one if we were to distribute this half it would have a value of a half but then you could simply distribute this one here so it would remain unchanged it doesn't matter how you do it and then we're left with our k value of one and then that's divided by one minus e to the negative alpha and then remember our negative alpha is this whole term here the coefficient on the n which is simply alpha plus j beta and then multiplied by our sampling period t and then we multiply that by z to the power of negative one and that's pretty much it that's as hard as this gets and then we'll do our second term so that's plus we have a k value again of one at the front so it's simply one divided by 1 minus e to our negative alpha and then our alpha value on this term is simply the coefficient on the n again and then we multiply that again by z to the power of negative 1 okay and that is it that is our whole impulse invariance question done now if you wanted to you could distribute this one half just to get rid of the brackets However, the equation is correct as it is. Now, you might be wondering, what would we do with this next? Well, we can use this digital filter to get an equation for y of n, which we can implement in something like C++ or Python or Java or another coding language where we can apply a filter in code rather than in circuitry like we've been doing previously. Okay guys, in a future video we'll go through that quite in depth and we'll create ourselves a digital filter, but for now, that's all. Thanks for watching. This might have seemed quick and easy. I hope that was the case, actually. And typically, the hardest part of the impulse invariance method is simply just rearranging your analog 
filter to get it in a form where you can easily take the Z transform. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video, if you had any problems at all feel free to let me know with a comment down below and I'll see you in the next one.